for hanging out here at the Renegade Compound. I uh, want to thank Richie from SoCal Express Trucking for coming over today. And uh, of course we want to thank Laura from Ultra Caro for setting this up for us. She got us a truck over here to hang out with today. Uh, our boy Richie here is going to let us polish his wheels and we're going to do some more videos with this truck. But uh, this thing's a really cool 2016 389 Peterbilt. Um, just a great truck. We saw this thing a trucking for kids this last year and just a really cool truck. It's got some custom pinstriping and stuff on it. But uh, what we're focusing on today is the wheels. Uh, this front wheel right here, we're going to do a short video on how to polish it up. Um, we're going to do it on the ground because I know a lot of people don't have the 20 ton jacks like we have in our shop. So I'm going to do it old school. We're going to do it without lifting it up and without jacking it up. Um, of course, most of you know we have a novice setup and a pro setup. Of course, our novice setup, everybody's going to run 3,500 RPM or less. Uh, you're going to run 3,500 RPM with your stiffer buffs, aka your orange mill treat airway and your yellow mill treat airways. And then uh, you're going to run about 2200 to 1800 RPM on your white buffs. Why? Because they're not made to spin fast. We're gonna have to remember that through any of our videos, any of our stuff that we're doing, anytime you're polishing something, never spin white buffs fast. Uh, for those of you that are pros, the guys that are more experienced, the guys that have been doing it for quite a while, I recommend the 6000 RPM grinders. You're gonna get the job done faster, you're gonna get a little bit brighter finish, and we just like using them. They're all around great machines. Now this specific model that we use is the Makita GA7021, spins 6,000 RPM set speed. I prefer the Makitas, they got a lot of torque, they don't bog down, and as we know, everything in polishing is all about consistency. We want to make sure we keep a nice consistent finish all the way through our product. What we're going to do here on Richie's truck is we're actually going to cut with an orange and brown. We're going to use the orange airway with a brown compound, and then we're going to finish a yellow buff with a green compound. Now, if we wanted to go all the way down to the white and green, instead of going yellow with green, we'd step it down to that yellow and brown. Uh, we've done that in a few other previous videos. Make sure you check those out as well. But if you're gonna step it down, if you're gonna go down to the white buff, you gotta make sure you throw a yellow in the middle with a brown compound so you can use the white and the green. Now, I've got a bottle of hand polish out here and a wax applicator pad. We're gonna use this to get around the lug nuts and into the tight spots we can't really get into all that well. Uh, especially with the wheel on the ground, you're gonna leave a little extra a little excess compound around the holes. Um, Richie here has got some painted inserts, so we've pulled those out and we've pulled our lug nut covers off. Um, with those inserts out, it'll help hide a little bit around those holes, but we don't ever want to have to hide anything. Let's get them cleaned up before we get that far. First thing we're going to focus on is you're going to remember with your orange, with your brown compound, I never rake my cut buffs. Unless I get something in it, I try not to rake those. I want this buff to stay as stiff as it can, as long as it can, and just keep working it in. Uh, we're going to start by doing around the lug nuts first. So you're not going to be able to keep a real even shine going in between there. you got to kind of move in different patterns. And then once we get done with that, we're going to go around, and then we're going to go around the outside and start filling in through the middle. So just kind of watch the technique and the pattern. Uh, this is for doing wheels just on the ground. If you jack them up to spin them, it's a whole lot easier. But I know a lot of you guys out there don't have that ability. So just check it out. All right, now as you can see, I've been doing this for quite a long time. I didn't really leave a whole lot of compound, nothing really hanging off any of the holes or anything. But I'm still gonna go across with a little bit of hand polish just to kind of clean up some of the excess residue before I go in color. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm put some hand polish on, I'm gonna wipe it off to thin it out a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna color across it just to finish it off real nice. Make sure you always shake it up. It will separate uh, as any good product should. Um, there's a nice little marble in here to help mix it back together so you're not shaking for an hour to get it there. Use a wax applicator pad to help apply it. I'm going to throw my respirator on. Of course, we want safety first. We're just going to finish this thing up.
So all we did now is just reinstall all the hardware. And of course, as you know, this is just a simple two-step process that we developed in our shop. Uh, Renegade also carries the same two-step process now. You can also turn it into a three-step process. There's no need for these eight-step processes anymore. Two steps, great product, that's all you need. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Of course, I'm Metal Polisher 3826 on Instagram. Evan C. Telling Polishing on Facebook. Renegade Products on Instagram is Renegade Products USA. Check out their website, renegadeproductsusa.com. Check out our website, goshineon.com. And also you can check out more how-to videos and stuff like this on my YouTube feed. It's youtube.com slash Evan Stager Metal Polishing.